Hi. Hello. Thanks for joining me today. Um, some of you will already know. My name is Sharon Pasula. I am Nihi Almeti on my mother's side, and I have evidence that on my dad's side, I'm Jewish. Um, I do walk in the Jesus way, and I also follow the Red Road. So today is uh, August the 25th, 2020. And uh, if you're watching this a little while later, it's still relevant. There will be relevance to this story till eternity. So before I start, I wanted to do an, a land, what's called a land acknowledgement. And I kind of, uh, I collect these because I do teach about this uh, occasionally. And so today I thought I would read one uh, that I saw posted at the Athabasca University. So they say, Athabasca University respectfully acknowledges that we are on and work on the traditional lands of the indigenous peoples. And then in brackets, Inuit First Nations Métis of Canada. We honor the ancestry, heritage and gifts of the indigenous peoples and give thanks to them. So I like that one, that's a good one. I hope you have your own. So today I'm uh, going to read an article that I wrote and uh, I'll talk about where I was uh, submitting it and so forth uh, at the end. So I've entitled this Out of the Whirlwind. Processing continues as I pray, ruminate, pray, research, pray, rest, and do it all over again. I learn by observing and then wonder why and how some things came to be. One observation that really got me thinking was how some people have absolutely embraced the whirlwind of rhetoric mainstream media has dished out about the Wuhan COVID virus. Many have never considered any other opinions or options. They have never thought about it for themselves. The sad thing is many don't want to. The status quo is their comfort zone. Some don't even care if the status quo is wrong. They just, quote, go along to get along. That's an adage somebody said somewhere. Doing the right thing is not in their radar, especially if it might engender hardship of any kind. I am at the other end of the spectrum, you may have noticed. I am prepared to do the right thing no matter what the cost. I am prepared to die in some instances. To this I have given a great deal of prayer and have peace about it. I am not afraid. So one conversation I had recently with someone holding an opposite view to mine caused me to think more deeply. She said, what if you get COVID? I said, well, then I will get sick and recover and move on. So she said, but what if you don't? You have some underlying issues that make you vulnerable. I said, I'm not worried about that. What if you die? She asked. Then I die, I said. We're all going to die, whether it's now or later. She paused and said, yeah, we're all going to die. So after that conversation, it occurred to me that people are afraid to die. The rhetoric coming out of the World Health Organization and Canada's own health agency has instilled an irrational fear in people that they unconsciously or not believe they will die if they get COVID. The message, uh, quote, stay safe, or pardon me, stay home, stay safe, save lives, end quote, implies that you are a killer if you don't mindlessly comply to their rules and oppression. That saying, stay home, stay safe, save lives, implies that everyone has COVID, so you have to stay home so no one else gets it and possibly dies. 
this is immoral and unethical. It is like you are guilty until you can prove you are innocent. In this case, you're sick and you have COVID and you can't even prove that you don't have it. Personally, I had a voluntary test and it was negative. The argument, the argument one might be asymptomatic tells me that the virus is weak. If I have the virus without any symptoms, that tells me my body is fighting it and I am staying healthy. I have a good immune system. Hello? When you have the common cold, there is no such thing as asymptomatic. You cough, sneeze, and try to get well. It has overcome you. But if I have a virus with no symptoms, it is not overcoming me. If I unknowingly had the virus with no symptoms and passed it on to someone else, what would happen 99% of the time? If they got sick, they would recover. They might not even get sick. If they fell into the 1% category, they might end up in ICU. If they had pre-existing conditions, they might die. As I was thinking about the conversation later, I was also reminded of a caption I read somewhere from a famous actor, which serves my point. Quote, this happened because you didn't wear a mask, end quote. I didn't read the story because I felt the comment was irrational, spoken out of emotion and anguish. So this whirlwind of emotion, anguish, untruths, exaggerations, false positives, fixation on death and fear has brought out unresolved issues in people, notably death and dying. I feel like I have come out of the whirlwind. Initially, I was like many people, vulnerable, scared, caught by surprise, overly trusting of mainstream media, compliant, and wary. I didn't have the facts. There didn't seem to be one source from which to glean objective, truly unbiased information. There was a seesaw of often contradictory information. So, after sifting and sifting and sifting information, two things emerged for me. I've come to a conclusion for which I am prepared to stand and voice unashamedly, yet humbly, and I am changed. I feel like I have more compassion towards people who get hysterical talking about COVID-related issues. And secondly, I continue to examine myself and allow the Holy Spirit to root out evil and replace it with righteousness. Sometimes it takes experiencing a whirlwind to help you find your way. So this is my story. And this is what I submitted to a small local community newspaper. It is my story and it got censored. It got censored. It is interesting that the editor supposedly is a rights activist. I guess only if you hold her view of things. To me, this is an example of the extent of the mania and fear in the world today. A person can't even tell their own story. Fortunately, I saw a break in the darkness yesterday. I'll share that in another post after I do a bit more of Pray, ruminate, pray, research, pray, and rest, like I said at the top. I hope you will give some thought to my comments. I hope you have or will research before you come to your own conclusion. Please don't just believe the rhetoric. Just because someone said it doesn't make it true. Just because mainstream media said it definitely doesn't make it true. 
you must know that media put their own spin on what they report. That is, they report it in a way to try sway you to a particular mindset. Keep in mind, media outlets describe themselves as a show, not a newscast. I can't remember the last time a media outlet used that term because being a newscast would mean theoretically unbiased, objective, and well-rounded, including both sides of the story. So before I sign off, I just would like to uh, pray a blessing on you and us and the world. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the Universe. Thank you, great mystery, that you are awesome and wonderful. Thank you, Creator, that you know the end from the beginning. Thank you that you want more for us than we even want for ourselves. Thank you, Creator, that you love us. Thank you that you've given us hope. Thank you that you've given us a hope in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gifts and talents that you've given us. Thank you, Creator, that you make a way where there is no way, that you are the way maker. So thank you, Creator, for your spirit of inspiration and revelation. And I just pray for whoever is watching, listening to this right now, that you will bless them and cover them with your love and your peace and open the eyes of their understanding. And Creator, I thank you that you prepare the way and I thank you in advance for good reports from this commentary. And I push back the darkness in the world in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Creator, that the light is coming, that there is a crack in the darkness and the darkness will continue to dissipate. And I just loose the ministering angels to complete the promises of God in the world. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Be blessed and prosper.